One of the newest features in Camera Raw 6 are lens correction profiles. Now this essentially puts the latest lens correction technology at your fingertips. So if we go up the top here to the lens correction panel, which is the six in from the left and click on it, you'll notice you have two tabs. You have the profile tab and you have the manual tab. Now the profile tab is a new section to lens corrections. And this essentially uh, will allow you to enable a lens profile correction. And what that will do is when I tick it on, it'll actually assign a profile to your image according to the make of your camera, which in my case here, it's Canon, uh, the model of my lens, uh, which in my case is a 24 to 105 mil lens. And then it'll assign a profile if there is actually a profile created for my camera and lens. And as you can see in this particular example, there's only one profile for that camera lens. Now underneath that, you have the correction amount. Now this uh, area essentially allows you to uh, increase or decrease the amount of correction that's been applied by the assigned profile. So if you're not happy with the corrections that have been made by the designated profile for your camera and lens, you can choose to either increase or decrease the amount of corrections that they've made. So um, in this particular example, if I just uh, do a preview up the top here and we go on and off, you'll notice that there's quite a significant distortion that has occurred and it's, it's actually corrected that. Um, now it's quite surprising considering the shot is actually taken uh, using an 80 mil focal length. So there is quite a lot of correction in that lens, even though it's not shot at a wider angle. So if I wanted to make a correction to this and say this was, it, it made way too much, a, way, a large correction that really I wasn't happy with, for example, I could go to the distortion uh, slider and I could actually correct that. I could decrease the amount of distortion that they made or vice versa, I could actually choose to increase the amount of correction uh, that the profile has made to my liking. So it's all sort of personal preference. Now, what if your camera or lens doesn't actually have its own profile? Or you don't want to use Adobe's um, set profiles that they've created? Well, if that's the case, you have two options. The first is to make corrections using the manual tab, which is up the top here. I'll just turn off the enable lens correction profile and I'll click on the manual tab. So you can use this tab to make uh, the majority of corrections that have been made with the actual profiles that have been created. So it has transform, which is a new, um, a new feature to the manual tab in lens corrections. You then have chromatic aberration and you have lens v-netting. So you have those options available to you. If you don't want to use the manual tab itself, your second option that's available to you is to actually create your own lens profile using Adobe's Lens Profile Creator, which is a free software application that you can download straight from the Adobe website. And I'll actually provide a link underneath this video to where you can actually get that. So this is Adobe's Lens Profile Creator. And essentially what it enables you to do is create your own camera and lens profile. So if you don't have one for your particular camera, you can go and create one. Uh, Adobe will provide you with a series of test charts that you can then print out. You can then set up and go and photograph in different uh, positions and different uh, compositions within your actual frame. So as you can see here, this is one in the center of your frame. And then we've got one that's actually to the left, one to the right one to the uh, bottom right hand corner, the center, uh, the left hand corner, etc, etc. So it's actually putting these actual uh, test charts right around the frame of your image. So it actually comes with instructions and it'll actually tell you what to do. But once you photograph those, you then want to actually load them into the Adobe Lens Profile Creator. And then you want to click on Generate Profiles up the top here. Once you click on that, 
it'll actually start going through all those test images that you shot and it will actually generate a profile for you based on your camera and lens settings. So it'll actually analyze all your EXIF data and, and whatnot and actually make that profile for you automatically. Once that profile is actually created, you can then actually save it straight to Adobe and it will automatically be imported into Camera Raw for you to be able to use uh, when you're actually in the lens correction panel. You can actually turn it on and enable that particular profile. Now if we were to jump back to Camera Raw, let's take a closer look at the actual manual tab and some of the options that or adjustments I should say that are actually available to you. So under transform you've got a range of new settings that you can choose from. You have distortion which is the allows you to basically choose how uh, spherical distortions in your image essentially as you can see as I make those adjustments uh, you can you can do some <laughs> really significant uh, and creative effects with this actual slider itself. I tend not to touch it too much because I prefer to use the um, the actual lens profile that's all actually created for me. From there you have the vertical and horizontal sliders. Now these allow you to make adjustments to perspectives. So for example in this particular image you'll notice that I've got these um, this little jetty here and you've got some of these wooden um, planks and I could actually correct that so that they were more um, parallel within the image if I wanted to. So I could actually make a slight adjustment to the image so they actually sit better within the actual image itself. Uh, so they actually sit parallel with the, the base of the image and then I can actually crop it from about here acrosswards just to keep that sort of looking um, not crooked as, as, as it were. So you have those two perspective adjustments that you can make. You also have a rotate slider which allows you to do basically a rotation of your image so you can rotate it. So that's really quite handy. And you can also do a scale where you choose to actually scale the image and increase the size or decrease the actual size of the image accordingly. So there's some pretty neat um, new sliders available in the manual tab. You also have chromatic aberration. Now chromatic aberration is where the optics in your lens fail to focus all the colors to the same convergence point. So what you essentially end up with are colored outlines on the edges of fine detail. Now this is especially common with wide angle lenses around the four corners of your image. So in this particular example if I zoom in to the bottom right hand corner you'll notice, I'll zoom into 200%, what you'll notice is you can see this blue outline along the jetty here and it looks quite, so that, so that itself is actually chromatic aberration, it sort of runs right up here, it's quite evident in the actual shot when you actually take a closer look. So what you're essentially doing uh, to fix these chromatic aberrations is you need to add back in to the affected areas opposite colors uh, than which are present. So in this example you'd actually make it, because that's sort of a very blue chromatic aberration, you'd want to actually uh, fi to fix the blue, I would actually grab this blue yellow fringe slider and I'm going to dial back in yellow. So I've dialed, uh, I've gone minus 15 and what you'll notice here is that the blue has actually disappeared around the outside of that jetty. Uh, so let's do a preview. So we go off, so there's the blue at the moment and we turn it back on and it's gone. And not only that, you'll actually notice the image is slightly shifted. So it's actually shifting like the, the underneath color layers, or color channels as it were, um, to reposition them and add those colors across those different areas. So that's really neat and that's how you sort of make a correction to your chromatic aberrations. One note though, you don't want to make some uh, too extreme corrections when you're doing this and you also want to make sure that you check other areas within your image. So if you're making an adjustment to the bottom right hand corner which I'm actually doing at the moment, I'd want to check 
the other areas of the image, so up in the top left-hand corner, maybe around the the bottom left-hand corner, etc., and even the center of the image, just to make sure that that correction hasn't actually affected any other areas in the image, because sometimes it can, especially if you're making extreme adjustments. Now, also available to you underneath the chromatic aberration settings are uh, is the defringe option. This essentially allows you to choose whether you like those um, red cyan fringe or blue yellow fringe adjustments to be applied just to the highlight areas or just to all edges within your image. Now to show you a, a distinct example of this, let's really go bananas and let's make a serious adjustment there. So as you can see, um, that's quite hideous, but it's going to really emphasize what I'm about to show you. So if we go in here and we go, well, let's just make that adjustment so it's for the highlights. And let's just make it so it's for all edges. So you can see a slight um, difference there. Highlights actually is more extreme in this particular example than all edges, where it actually knocks it back a little bit. So that's quite interesting. So you have that selection option available to you if you require it. So let's just zero off these settings again. And let's jump back to fit, to, fit in view. Next, we have lens vignetting. Now, lens vignetting is very useful not only to correct um, lens imperfections where you've got, especially with wide angle photos, where you've got that sort of dark vignetting coming around all the corners of your image that can look really um, out of place and, and not, quite, not quite right. What you can actually do with this is make those density corrections around those areas of image. So you can actually, in this particular example, you can see I've lightened off those sort of outside corners, as you can see there, and you can darken them. Now, it's not only very useful to make those corrections to your lens imperfections, but also to create some dramatic effects that can draw focus to the center of your image. So sometimes it's really nice just to actually darken off the outside edges of your image to really focus the attention of the viewer on the center of the image and actually draw them into the image. So it can be very useful for that type of effect if you are looking for that and that is something that you're actually trying to do within your photograph and lead the eye into the center of the image, which you should always try and, you know, which you should always try to be thinking about when you're actually um, creating a photograph is where do you want the eye to go within the image? Do you want it to go, you know, off to the left or off to the right, or do you want it to go straight down the center? So it's a, it is something very important to think about as, as a photographer. But the lens vignetting option here is very handy for um, making those adjustments. You have the midpoint slider as well there that allows you to control um, where that lens vignetting actually starts with your image. So as you can see there, I can actually make it quite dark and, and quite focused on the center, or I can actually go back to a central point, or even draw it out further. So it does give you a fair bit of control, and it is definitely worthwhile playing with uh, when you're actually making your adjustments in Camera Raw.